Who's ready for a set tour? The Harry Potter films are filled with magical sets we all secretly wish we live on. But what was building and acting on these sets actually like? As much as we all wish Hogwarts was real, the truth is, only a miniature version of it was created for exterior shots. While that's impressive in itself, there are still locations you'll recognize in the UK that they used for the filming of Harry Potter. Durham Cathedral, Annick Castle, New College, Laycock Abbey, and Gloucester Cathedral all hold a tiny bit of Hogwarts with them, kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. The Philosopher's Stone was the only film that they shot in an actual location for the Forbidden Forest. After that, it was all up to the set designers to recapture the magic that came along with it. This was because of Aragog's lair. The most challenging part? Getting the roots right. The roots became the most interesting sculptural part of it, and the roots got bigger and bigger. Not only did they hand sculpt the trees and roots, but Aragog as well. By the end of the films, they had created 600-foot-long backdrops of the Forbidden Forest and trees that were 12 feet in diameter. Watching Hogwarts crumble wasn't easy on anyone, especially the set designers. The entire process of creating a destroyed Hogwarts for the big battle took three months and is where the majority of the cast said their goodbyes. While they relied heavily on green screen for the backdrops of the battle, all the rubble, rock, and explosives we see were added in when building the set. I think sometimes when something is destroyed, it shows the scale of it. They also had the extensive challenge of making the rubble soft, yet realistic. This was because there were constantly actors running full speed through the rubble, and they didn't want anyone getting hurt. The majority of the walls and structures were made out of plywood, so they could be realistically destroyed. Diagon Alley was probably one of the more versatile sets the franchise had. It changed for every film, depending on what shops and storefronts were needed for the storyline. However, no matter what, the set designers had the challenge of designing sets that were slanted, crooked, and overall, very unique. The inspiration for this set was the stories of Charles Dickens. There was one scene where they shot on location for Diagon Alley, in the Philosopher's Stone when Harry visits the Leaky Cauldron. That scene was actually filmed at Leadenhall Market. Believe it or not, the Diagon Alley set was also used for Hogsmeade. Told you it was versatile. Because both towns had the same wizardry and magical feel, they would switch storefronts, add in some snow, and anything else that was needed, and they'd have the small town just outside of Hogwarts that we see Harry and his friends exploring in The Prisoner of Azkaban. The first time we see Gringotts in the Philosopher's Stone, the cast actually filmed at the Australia House in London. But jump forward a decade to the Deathly Hallows, and the set designers actually reconstructed the entire set. This was because the flying dragon scene would have been impossible to film otherwise. If you pay attention, you'll see that while it's almost an exact replica, the designers just couldn't find the same exact marble floor or wood paneling. The Weasley Burrow is one of the warmest sets of the entire film, which meant they had to pay extra attention to all the family details. Throughout the films, we've seen many different variations of the burrow, and while they created the interior of the home for the Chamber of Secrets, how could we forget the infamous magical clock and self-washing dishes? They constructed both a new interior and exterior for the Half-Blood Prince. The Ministry of Magic set we see in the Order of the Phoenix took a whole three months to build. It was important for the set designers and director to get this right because it was another extension of the Wizarding World that Harry had never seen before. I've never used the visitor's entrance before. Should be fun. The set was so detailed that it included actual fireplaces where the wizards traveled using flu powder, a daily profit stand, bankers, and carts full of parchment being pushed around by some of the 300 extras. The Room of Requirement was probably one of the most difficult sets to film in that the crew designed. While the novel describes the room full of cushions and books, they wanted to go a more neutral route in the film. Stuart's idea was to put the mirrors all, all around the uh, room and, uh, and very quickly we realized you know, that there are no way to avoid reflections. Because the room was surrounded with mirrors, they also needed to figure out the lighting situation, which resulted in many meetings and a discussion to just go the CGI route in order to get rid of them. As for the cast, this set wasn't the most pleasant either. It was just stifling, stifling heat. James Phelps had admitted that he hates the Room of Requirement set. Turns out being in a room full of Hogwarts students practicing magic isn't the most ideal situation after all. In fact, Bonnie Wright called it suffocating. The Great Hall is some of the first magic the characters and the audience get introduced to. 
The set was built in a studio, but was modeled after the real-life Christ Church College. Along with the hall, set designers also crafted Dumbledore's lectern and the Hogwarts house point counter. An item that was said to have been the cause for a national shortage of Indian glass beads. If you need any more proof the Great Hall is its own kind of magic, the reaction we see of the first years walking in during Philosopher's Stone is their raw reaction. That was the first time they had stepped onto that set. Whenever we have a new cast member come in, they always talk about when they walked into the Great Hall set. Because it's just, it's amazing. The Great Hall was used for the six following films and was even transformed for the Yule Ball in the Goblet of Fire. A set actor Warwick Davis loved, mostly because he got the okay to crowd surf during filming. We see Dumbledore's office a few times throughout the films, which means they constructed it completely in the studio to use in each film. They made sure that they stuck very close to the books for this set, even including the 48 portraits of the headmasters, bookshelves that had books mentioned in the novels, the Sword of Gryffindor, his memory cabinet, and finally, the pen sieve. This even doubles as the room where Lupin and Harry studied magic together in The Prisoner of Azkaban. They just switched out the props. This Hogwarts washroom set from the Half-Blood Prince may not have been memorable to us, but for Tom Felton, it's one of his favorite scenes he's ever shot. This was because of how practical they made the set for the effects we see on screen. When we did spells, normally not a lot actually happened. But in this case, they rigged the whole bathroom up with explosives. So every time you gave a little flick, something would blow up, which was very satisfying. When Harry makes his way into the Chamber of Secrets in the second film, what we see there was entirely constructed in studio. However, in the last film, they recreated that set using VFX and green screen. Excuse me, sir. Can you tell me where I might find platform nine and three quarters? Think you're being funny, do ya? Harry Potter wouldn't be Harry Potter without platform nine and three quarters. There's just something about running through a brick wall that gets you every time. While the majority of these shots were done in the real world at King's Cross Station in London, for the final film, they recreated the platform, the train, and the tracks for interior shots. They transformed an old steam engine into the Hogwarts Express and would film it moving along tracks for exterior shots. We all know how huge the Harry Potter franchise is around the globe, but it is still shocking that they were able to get permission to close down London's Piccadilly Circus for this Deathly Hallows scene. That's basically the Times Square of London. In Deathly Hallows Part 1, Shortly after the Golden Trio leave Fleur and Bill's wedding, they find themselves in Piccadilly Square, surrounded by hundreds, if not thousands, of others. In order to get this scene shot, they had to block off certain parts of the road and gathered crowds of extras to cooperate with their filming, but still ran into other challenges. We were surrounded by paparazzi, which is also not great because of the flashing of their cameras. While CGI and VFX are a big part of these films, there's nothing like practical set building to get that epic final result on screen, even if the actors were a little suffocated sometimes. What was your favorite set to take a look behind the scenes at?